Okay, so I'm going to give you a quick look at the uh, mount under power now. I have the uh, power cord hooked up to the wall, hand box to the mount. I'm going to go ahead and turn the power on. And this is how it boots up. Shows, uh, well, it shows it's in the zero position, but I know it's not. It's got the current date and time in there. I've already set that. Uh, GPS on, but it hasn't locked up. It'll show GPS OK when it has locked up. I'm going to go ahead and just slew this real quick so you can hear it. That's on one of the lower steps. I'm going to, if you push the, just the, like the 9 button, So it sounds pretty nice when it's loose. Okay, so we're gonna go through the uh, firmware upgrade process. I'm gonna screen capture my laptop as well. Um, so on the uh, pan controller, if you wanna see what the current firmware is, go to the menu and I'm just gonna go up one and then up to, you could go down, 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 all the way to the bottom, and then there's the firmware. So right now, my uh, hand controller is uh, 2017, uh, 0322, March 22nd. Uh, the main computer, or the main controller board, the RA and DAC are all the same, 2016, 1101, and the catalog is 2015, 0429. So I know there is a new RA, uh, controller board up, update for the firmware, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and update it to now. So I'm just going to back out of that, I think. So back. Let's get back. Oh, it looks like the GPS is locked up now. GPS okay. Okay, so the connection here that I have is the uh, RS-232 cable to an RS-232 to USB converter into the laptop. Um, save yourself the hassle, go ahead and get one of the FTDI chipset uh, USB to RS-232 converters. I've tried the Prolific, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Uh, these are just hassle-free. I think I got this one on Amazon for maybe 15 bucks. Um, if you want to update either the uh, main controller board, RA or deck controller boards in the mount, you'll need to come into this RS-232 port on the mount. And you actually don't even need the hand controller when you do that. I just plugged it in just so I could kind of see what's going on. If you're going to mount update the hand controller, you'll need to put the RS-232 plug into this port right here with the hand controller connected to the mount because the hand controller needs power. And that's the only way it can get power is being connected to the mount with the mount powered on. Okay, so to upgrade the firmware, it's pretty simple. Go to the iOptron website, download the firmware upgrade PDF file. It really walks you through just absolutely everything you'll need to do. Um, it tells you the uh, the type of connection you'll need. If you need the USB to RS-232 converter, you'll have to buy that separately. The other wire that you need comes with the mount. It uh, starts off uh, going through the device manager. So once you've plugged everything up, and I have everything plugged up, and uh, the mount is turned on, you'll go through the device manager. and look for the ports. I'm on COM port 10, so I'll just remember that number. Here it shows you where that is. Um, there is a, uh, an upgrade utility that you'll need to download from the iOptron website as well. I have that. Um, uh, this talks, there are two different things that you'll kind of need to know. If you're going to upgrade the hand controller, the RS-232 plugs directly into the hand controller and it says uh, hold the enter button when you turn the power to the mount on. That's for upgrading the hand controller, which we're not going to do. Uh, we're going to update the RA mainboard, which is on the mount. So I'm going to scroll down to that section. Okay, so here, here it is for the uh, main control board and then it's the same for the uh, RA and DEC control board. So you plug the RS-232 
cable into the mount itself and, and it's labeled RS-232 on the mount. And we're going to start the upgrade utility which is here. And then you just browse to the file that you want to use to update. The newest one for me is this one, 2017-0505. Open it. It shows that the file is verified. You select the COM port that you want to use and click upgrade. Uh, it'll start talking to the mount. I think at one point the uh, CAN controller will beep. It only takes about a minute or so to do this. I'm not exactly sure what the beep is. I'm going to read it. Oh, it just said that the uh, there's no connection or the firmware is being updated. So I think what it's just telling you is you can't use the hand controller right now. Yeah, mainboard connection error or any boards are being updated is what that message says. So it took about a minute, um, upgrade successful. So if I, I'm not going to click upgrade again because that would just do it over again. I'm just going to close this out. Uh, it does recommend to uh, power cycle before your, if you're going to do both boards, power cycle uh, before you do the next board. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, turn it off now and turn it, and wait a few seconds. So I'll turn the, the uh, mount off. I'm just going to wait a few seconds and turn it back on. Uh, this talks about the, oh, there's a zero position that will probably need to be reset when you upgrade the firmware. Uh, I don't have the EC version. It looks like there's a calibration that needs to happen. And then just some common errors if it doesn't work properly. So I'm going to go back to the uh, Ioptron Commander if I can find it. Too many windows open. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the IOPTRON Commander and uh, it's showing connected now and I'm going to check the firmware version and now, yeah, the RA main board is uh, 2017-0505. So the firmware worked, it updated, everything's connecting fine. Um, just going to go through a few other of these settings just in case you're curious communication status this just shows you the the stuff that's being sent and received to and from the mount not very interesting but uh, it could potentially show if you have a connection or don't have a connection to your mount enable log uh, that's just a bunch of the serial commands that get logged so i'm going to actually uncheck that because i don't need to know all of that if you want to see the actual mount and you can actually control the mount um, from here if I just set the uh, speed a little higher and click the button, you hear it slowing and now it stopped. And you can change the uh, speed. Okay, so uh, some of these settings, SLU, this is where uh, you can select some different options. So named stars, uh, they do it by catalog numbers. So if you star number one is Akamar, and then whatever that one is. So ultimately you could select your star, hit confirm SLU, and it would go. I'm not going to do that now. It has all of the, the databases in here, double stars goes through the Messier list. Uh, you can put in your own target coordinates if you want and then hit SLU and it'll go there. So this is just the internal control program if you're not going to use planetarium software. It's pretty easy to use the planetarium software though. Um, if I click on park it'll go to one of several predefined park positions. Uh, you can set your own position so if you wanted to park it horizontally in your, in your uh, observatory you would just do that, start the parking, and it would go to the to that point. Zero position is where you need to start from before each uh, observing session. At the end of the observing session, if you want to 
go back to the zero position, which is counterweights down and uh, telescope pointing north, you would click this. Um, if I've already set it up with the counterweight straight down and everything's nice and aligned, I would do set current position as a zero position. That's a way to reset it. Um, this is kind of interesting. This is search zero position. And what this does, I'm going to go ahead and click it. It'll slew the mount in both declination and RA until it finds that zero position. The uh, counterweight straight down, the declination pointing due north, and uh, it wasn't too far off from where it needed to be, so it's done. It, it has now set and update the zero position. So now if I just slew slightly off of that and I tell it go to the zero position, it'll take it back to where it started from. Uh, advanced features, position of Polaris. Uh, this is how you would, or this isn't actually very good. It shows you the where it is in the polar alignment scope. There are other apps out there that are very easy to use. Um, even the hand controller is a little bit easier to use than this. Uh, pointing model, once you're aligned, this will all be populated. Shows you some of the, deviation, some of the deviations in your setup. Um, if I wanted to start tracking from here, I could. Now it's tracking. I'm going to keep it from tracking. <clears throat> mount settings, and this is a little interesting. Um, I, uh, I set the guide rate in the hand controller at 0.9 times sidereal rate, and uh, when I open this up, it shows me that. It was originally set at 0.8, I think, um, which means that those values must be stored on the mount, because uh, if I change this and then look at it in the hand controller, it'll be the new the new uh, setting in the hand controller. Um, you can run the mount without the hand controller attached. I've tried that and it works just fine. Um, you can use either this to drive it around the sky or you can use your planetarium software.